I got a phone call late one night. It was my younger brother, and he said, Mom is dying. He took the phone, and he put it to my mother's ear. Her breathing was labored, and so was mine. My mother was dying on the phone with me. I couldn't make out much of what she was saying, except I heard this very clearly. She said, I love you, Dwanita. And then she died. My life changed forever in that moment. My mother died. And I also think a little part of me died right with her. I've had quite a journey. It's been an amazing ride. It all started way back when, you know, when I was as brilliant as I've ever been at the age of 20. <laughs> I started my corporate career in corporate America. Sarcasm inserted said, welcome. You are amazing, high potential, emerging leader. You're going to go places. You'll soar. I heard all the things. And then there was that pause when my boss said, you know, accept your name. It's not going to work. It's too ethnic hard to pronounce. Not sure people are going to understand it. Not so sure you'll ever see that name on a C-suite door. I listened. It was hard. Couldn't really figure out why Duanita was hard, but we could say charcuterie board. <laughs> It was hard. I couldn't figure out how we could say supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. I couldn't even figure out how in fifth grade I won the fifth grade spelling bee because I spelled and said anti-disestablishmentarianism. <laughs> I also learned that HR Magazine actually said 37% of the people that they surveyed around this very issue said yes they shortened their names or they changed their names to make it easier to spell or pronounce. This was a big issue. I didn't know what to do here. So I did something that changed my life. I changed my name. I cut it. I sacrificed it. And I became Nita. Nita made me hurt inside. Nita made people happy. Nita kept me from being my whole self. Nita made me acceptable. Nita is a lovely name. It just isn't mine. Through this process, I learned a lot about what it means to be whole. I guess I have to, in many ways, go back to my mother. My mother was unrelenting. If I said Nita, she said Dwanita. If I spelled Nita, she spelled Dwanita. She never let it go. So about a year ago, after 40 years, of being Nita. I made a very big decision in my life. I decided I was going to be Dwanita again. I reclaimed my birth name, and in many ways, I reclaimed the wholeness of who I am. 
So I want to share a wish that I have for each of you. My wish for you is that you will always be in a space and make a space for you to be wholly and fully who you are, all of you. And I have some tips around how you might go about doing that. It starts with this. Start with telling the truth. Tell the truth about how much of your own self you've given up over time. And know that you, all of you, is good enough. You are wholly, fully, and sufficiently enough. The second thing I'd like you to think about is this. I don't want you to get used to learning how to navigate adversity to have your wholeness. Don't learn how to navigate it. Learn how to get rid of it so that you might make space for the wholeness of who you are. Be unrelenting about your wholeness, just like my mother was about my name. The third thing I want you to think about is this. Be an upstander with all that you have in you. Be an upstander for yourself and for others. Commandments coming. If Philip introduces themselves as Philip, thou shall not call Philip Phil. <laughs> if Barbara introduces Barbara with the pronoun they, thou shall not say she. <laughs> if professional hairstyles are the topic of the day and somehow you frown upon braids or natural hair, thou shall not do that either. <laughs> Create with all that you have a way to course correct the sacrifice of wholeness in whatever you do. Lastly, bring it. Bring all of you, not part of you, because the world actually needs all of you. Reclaiming three little letters, D-W-I, has changed my life forever. I am Twinita. <laughs>